Starling Marte made his winter league debut on Wednesday night. What would a healthy Marte mean to the Mets this season? I'll break it all down on today's edition of Locked On Mets. You are Locked On Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all you amazing Mets fans. You're watching Locked On Mets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Ryan Finkelstein. If you want to find any of my work, follow me on X at Finkelstein Ryan. You can also find some of my writing at JustBaseball.com, where I work as the managing editor. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right on new customers, get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 money line bet. It's $150, bucks, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Starling Marte made a healthy return to the Dominican Winter League on Wednesday night. In his first at bat, he laced a sharp single up the middle, rounded first, had a big smile on his face, seemed to be moving well. It is a really good sign for a guy that really has a chance to impact the Mets season significantly on either the positive side or the negative side, because we saw what a bad Marte did to the Mets this year. You know, Buck Showalter kept him in that two hole for a very long time. He only hit 248. He got on base at a 301 clip. He had a 324 slugging percentage. And you compare that to the year prior. His batting average dropped over 40 points. He hit 292 in 2022. His on base percentage over 40 points from 347 to 301. And his slug dropped off. 146 points, a 468 slug the prior year. That's because not only did he hit 16 home runs, but he had some doubles. He had triples. He had five triples in 2022 compared to one in 2023. And even more glaring, 24 doubles compared to just seven. Now, there was more playing time, but not significantly more playing time. 118 games in 2022 compared to uh, 86 games in 2023. This guy was not right because of the health last year. I think that's the thing that we probably overlook. And if you read an article from The Athletic today, it was Mets Notes, and it said Stalin Marte practicing in winter ball is a debut near. He ends up debuting. Actually, this article came, uh, now that I'm looking at the date of it, on uh, December 31st. But it was written by Will Salmon, and I guess this was, you know, five days ago, right? Talking about him, you know, starting to to practice in the Winter League and that a debut was coming now. It happened. But an interesting note that he had this article was a really comprehensive look at what happened to Marte last season. So I'm just going to read from Sam in here. He says, the poor numbers and games missed can be attributed to a few things. Marte's double groin surgery following the 2022 season always presented a challenge. The Mets took things slowly with him in spring training. By mid-March, In only his second great fruit league game, Marte left after being hit in the head with a fastball. During the Mets' first homestand of the season, Marte suffered a neck strain sliding into third base on a steal attempt. In July and August, Marte missed a few weeks because of migraines. Once he returned from the intense headaches, Marte was placed on the injured list with a groin injury, and that's the way his season ended. And then he follows that up with an interesting quote from uh, David Stearns, where he says, Everything we've gotten so far in Starling has been really positive. I think as I begin to understand and learn a little bit of what happened last offseason, understand how some of the core procedures set back his offseason prep, he didn't get the type of work that he liked to in the offseason. And I learned how important that is for him to prepare for spring training appropriately and then use spring training as a jumping off point into the season. I think he's in a much better spot now. He's eager to get going. He feels strong. We're never going to know until we get into a season for players who are bouncing back from injury, but everything I've heard so far has been very positive. So again, that is painting the picture of a healthy Starling Marte. And that's also showing you what he went through last year. You get hit in the head in spring training. You have a neck strain. There's migraines. It was a year where things weren't going right while still dealing with that groin injury the entire year. This is a guy that lost his step last year. Literally look at his sprint speed. He lost a foot per second. So that impacted him in the outfield. But I also think that that loss of a step 
more showed itself in how he was feeling. He didn't have that burst. And that trickles all the way through his game. That impacts him in the box. That impacts him on the bases. That really impacted him in the outfield. Now, Marte still stole a lot of bags last year. Swept 24 bases in 86 games. That was on 28 attempts. He's a great base dealer. And the new rules made it way easier for him to continue to steal bases. He stole only 18 bases in 2022. So that shows you the difference of what he can do with these new rules. If Starling Marte is healthy, he can still be a menace on the base pass even at 35 years old. The question is going to be, can he stay healthy? And can he get back to the hitter he was? Because if Starling Marte can be something close to the 2022 version of himself, the Mets lineup looks completely different. It, it just reimagines everything. Because without him, you're trying to talk yourself into some combination of DJ Stewart and Tyrone Taylor being able to potentially fill two corner spots and Jeff McNeil. But if Marte is on the field and he's not an albatross, he's actually an above average contributor again. That's just going to do so much for this team. And that's what I want to talk about next. What would it mean to actually have a healthy Starling Marte? How much does that actually put the Mets closer to contention? We're going to break that all down in just a minute. First, though, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right on new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. It's $150 win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there's so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays. You can find bets in the new Explore tab, or you can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, which is the best way to find popular parlays. Again, you still have the NFL season that's winding down with the playoffs soon upon us. And you got the NBA season. So any night there's going to be some NBA action going on, you can find your favorite team or just a game that you want to watch, you want to lay a little action on, you find that star player, create a parlay, do so much over at FanDuel. And again, remember, you place that $5 money line bet, win or lose, you're going to get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit at FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. If you're an everyday listener of the show and you don't want to miss out on any of our bonus coverage, make sure you become a Locked On Mets Insider. This is our texting service where you get updates from me anytime something breaks on the Mets, anytime I have a hot take to share, or if I write an article, stuff like that, I can send it directly to your phone. You can also ask me questions anytime. I'm always going to answer all the questions I get in from subtext. I appreciate all of you who have subscribed and all of you who still want to subscribe. You can find the link in the episode description or go to subtext.com slash locked on mats. Starling Marte being back to himself this year would do so much for this team because you're looking at the outfield and you got Brandon Nimmo. Awesome, right? Four win player at least could be even better than that in a good year. Could This could be the all-star season for Nimmo. He had 25 home runs last year, still playing good defense in center. You have no questions about the performance you're going to get for him, assuming he can stay healthy again, which he's now done the last two years in a row. But then you look beyond that. Left field, right field. Who is it going to be? Is it DJ Stewart and Tyrone Taylor? Or do you have a guy in Starling Marte that was an all-star in 2022 and has been an above-average starter for a very long time? You look at the career track record of Marte compared to Stewart and Taylor, and it's not even close. And it's not like that success is so far in the rearview mirror that he can't find it again. 2022, he was great. 2021, he was even better. Now you could say, oh, that's just a decline, right? He was better in 2021 than he was in 2022. And now last year we saw even more of a decline, but really, I just think that was a guy that had a rough year in a lot of different ways. I think dealing with that injury was a big problem, right? You have the other injuries that I talked about in the last segment that obviously plagued him a little bit as well. You had the team performing horribly, and it's just rough. But again, if you get that version of Sterling Marte where he can, in that first inning, lace a single, 
and steal second base and then score on a base hit from a Lindor, it changes so much about your team. I don't really know how they line things up. I don't know if Marte has just lost that two spot um, forever now because of what he did last year. But if he went out and he had a great spring coming off playing in the Winter League, then all right, who knows? He might be back in that two hole. And then you could bat Jeff McNeil fifth, and all of a sudden your one through five is a lot better than it would have been. And then beyond that, you know, you'll have to get more out of an Alvarez and a Beatty and a Vientos and a DJ Stewart and a Tyrone Taylor and all these other guys that are going to fill into these other spots. But uh, one through five of Nemo, Marte, Lindor, Alonzo McNeil is five players that could really impact winning. I think I have been someone that has sort of written off Marte after what we saw last year. And it's probably not entirely fair because I do think there's a world where this guy can get back to being something close to what he was. If he actually is healthy, which is obviously a massive question mark at this stage. But the fact that he's playing in the winter league is not a small thing. He has not done that since going back to the off season between 2017 and 2018. What was significant about that year? Starling Marte was suspended in 2017 for PEDs. So he went and he wanted to get his rhythm. So he goes to plays in the Winter League, comes back, plays 145 games for the Pirates in 2018, hit 20 home runs, stole 33 bases, batted 277, 327 on base, 460 slug, had a 112 WRC plus, 12% better than your league average hitter. He was a four-win player. That might have been one of his gold glove seasons, honestly. I have to look back and check on baseball reference, but the defense of numbers looks really good as well. Then he had a good 2019, 2020, split time with a couple teams, 2021, split time with a couple teams, ends up with the Mets. But his career really sort of springboarded again in 2018 after playing in the Winter League. That's not to say he's going to get a third win now, coming off the Winter League again, but I do think it speaks to a guy that wanted to get back in the box, see some live competition, and, and a motivated player. His Starling Marte just didn't care anymore. If he was just cashing in his final couple of checks and ready to close out his big league career after he finishes off this four-year deal with the Mets, he wouldn't be playing in the Winter League right now. I think this shows a guy that is hungry and someone that maybe has a chip on his shoulder. That's a really good thing for the Mets. Because, again, if you were to look at Marte and compare his career to DJ Stewart or Tyrone Taylor, there's no question who the highest upside corner outfielder the Mets have on this roster right now. It's not even close. It's absolutely DJ Stewart. No, I'm kidding. It is Starling Marte. DJ Stewart can bring some power. Tyrone Taylor might bring the best glove. But Marte's the guy that could be an all-star. I don't think that's going to happen. But I know DJ Stewart and Tyron Taylor aren't going to be an all-star. Marte at least was one a couple years ago. And the other thing is with those other guys, with Jeff McNeil, with the knowledge of what happened last year, and a vacant DH spot where you don't have to force feed at bats to Daniel Vogelback. Although, who knows, Mark Vientos could end up sponging up a lot of that playing time if he can hit. But I do think the Mets are going to get to a position. They don't sign a J.D. Martinez or a Justin Turner where they can cycle some guys through that DH spot. And that's going to allow Marte to get off his feet. You throw Tyrone Taylor out there for a day, your outfield defense is going to get better anyway with him out there. I think that's an underrated thing the Mets could do to try to keep Marte on the field. And again, a healthy Starling Marte is going to do wonders for the Mets. You look at who's getting paid the most on this team. It's Lindor, then it's Nemo, then it's Marte. It's a lot of money. I actually just did, uh, for JustBaseball.com today, a ranking of the top 15 worst contracts in the game. I had Marte in the top 15. I believe I had him in at number 13. I think I put Andrew Benintendi right ahead of him because Benintendi still has four years left on his deal. And Marte has two. Uh, but yeah, it, it's gotten to the point where you can call it one of the worst contracts in the game because there's just no guarantee this guy's going to be healthy this year or productive. But 
when you read that article from the athletic that really details the whole saga of a season for Marte, when you see him with a big smile on his face in the Dominican winter league, that they're getting the base knock in his first at bat, you do start to have a little bit of optimism that maybe Marte has something left in the tank and he can be an above average performer for you this year. If not, the Mets definitely have a question about how they're going to get any production in those corner spots in the outfield, which does lead me to ask what will be the final question we'll try to answer on the show today. Do the Mets still need to add an outfielder? Talk about that next. First, though, another word from our sponsors. Right now, the Mets outfield situation is pretty clear. You got Nemo in center. Marte is healthy. He's in right. Now you got a platoon in left. DJ Stewart and Tyrone Taylor. And Jeff McNeil can always fill a need if any of those guys are hurt or just not performing. He can slide into the outfield. The problem is you don't have that second baseman in place because that would have been Ronnie Mauricio, but he's not there. I guess now it's Joey Wendell, but I don't love the idea of Joey Wendell getting playing time anywhere. I still hate that signing. There's now part of me that wishes we could go back in time and reverse the uh, non-tender of Louis Guillaume and prevent the Mets from signing Wendell. I, I just think the guy's washed, and I hope I'm wrong. I think the reason why the Mets signed him is because they believed in his glove, and maybe they believe in his glove more than you or Mace. Because David Stearns loves run prevention, and maybe because of that, he loves him to enjoy Wendell, and maybe I will be proven wrong, and this guy does have something left in the tank with the bat or the glove so good that you don't care. But the Mets are in a weird spot with their roster construction where you can make an argument, that they might need to add another outfielder because you could say, are they really going to rely on Marte in one corner and a combination of Stewart and Taylor in the other? Is that really where they're at, where DJ Stewart has ascended to the point where he might be your starting left fielder after just August and September where he was good down the stretch? I get those concerns. And then you look at the infield. And Wendell's backing up three spots. The Mets have interest in Gio Urshela. If they do that, they at least have a right-handed you know, utility infielder that can go to. So that helps. You have Mark Vientos to figure out playing time for. It's just a weird team right now. And I don't really know what they should add. But you look at the outfield market and you tell me, go get Harrison Bader. That doesn't fix things for the Mets. Because they got Tyrone Taylor. With Tyrone Taylor, that you know basically took the skill set that you know, you might be looking at in the market like a Michael A. Taylor or Harrison Bader. Tyrone Taylor does those things, and he brings more power. So that was that addition. I think that's the outfielder that they're adding. I really don't believe this team is going to add another outfielder. I think the way they look at it is they're really optimistic that Marte is going to be able to be that starting right fielder on opening day. They feel great about Nimmo in center. And they're curious enough about DJ Stewart and they like the floor of Taylor's defense and left with some pop as well, that they're going to roll the dice and they always know that they can go to McNeil. The issue for me is just not having that good option when McNeil slides out. And that does also lead to the fact that Ronnie Mauricio did undergo a surgery on his torn ACL. That was on Tuesday. And the recovery time is 8 to 12 months. So we do the math from January, 8 months. That's August. And is that just to be able to start the running process? Like how long through this, you know, can he actually get on the field and play in big league games? I still am very cautious to think that we're going to see Ronnie Mauricio this year. And that injury just is a backbreaker when you think about all these problems that we're discussing on these shows. Because if you had Mauricio, you feel so much better about your outfield situation because you're a breakout from him and Beatty away from just sliding Jeff McNeil into a corner and not even thinking about guys like Tyrone Taylor and DJ Stewart or Marte if he's not healthy. And the downside to not getting an outfielder is if Starling Marte in you know May ends up back on the IL and you can't play him, 
And now all of a sudden you are in a situation where Tyrone Taylor and DJ Stewart playing every day. And then the minor league signing of Trace Thompson becomes important because then he becomes your fourth outfielder. I also believe the presence of Drew Gilbert, it at least gives the Mets another option. Maybe not in April or May, maybe not even in June, but I think Drew Gilbert's going to be ready by the second half. And whichever spot you need help, whether that's an injury to somebody, whether that's a lack of performance, I think Drew Gilbert's going to be able to fill into one of those outfield spots and really provide value. So because of all of those things, and because of a market where outside of Cody Bellinger or Teoscar Hernandez, I just don't see the value addition the Mets could make in this free agent market. I don't believe they will add an, off, an outfielder this offseason or another one after getting Taylor. I think that was the one addition. And with that, better hope that Star Marte is healthy and that he is as close to 90% or 80% of what he was in 2022 and he can be a solid if not an above average starting right fielder for the Mets this season it's really important I'm happy to see him back on the field playing baseball with a smile on his face hopefully gearing up for a real bounce back in 2024 anyway that's going to be all for today's edition of Locked on Mets appreciate all of you who tuned into the show Make sure you follow, rate, and review wherever you get your podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. We're making a push to 8,000 subs. So I appreciate all of you who subscribe. If you want to find me on X, you can do so at Finkelstein Ryan. If you want to be a Locked On Mets insider, you can find a link in the episode description. That you made it to the end of the show. If you're watching on YouTube, head over to Locked On Sports Today, which is the first ever 24-7 streaming channel covering everything in the world of sports with our local experts from each team and our league-wide experts from each league. Follow Locked On Sports today, streaming right now, 24-7 on YouTube.